All right, let's finish with this problem. Oh, between three and five, I did one and five. Ooh, okay. So one point five minus So about point nine five six. Thirteen what did you get? Yeah. Oh, we're going uh, three, three and five. Good. So you've got your table here. So it's really good that you uh, built the table here. 13, 3.4, 1.5, so that seems to agree. So you've got 1.5 minus 0.54. So it's joules. You got 0.956. Step back for a second. Where did all these numbers come from? What formula? From the. What's this? Write the formula down. From the E equals negative thirteen point six times z squared over n squared. You notice I've been using this subscript n. This means the energy level of level one is this. Energy level of two oh, would be this. They are not trouble. Yeah, they are in electron volts. It's best to even write EV as part of the formula so we don't forget that. These are already in electron volts. Otherwise, they wouldn't be these nice normal numbers here. They'd be yeah. teensy tiny numbers. So these are in electron volts. So it was good that you wrote down the units, but we wrote down the wrong units. This should be 0.956 electron volts. Uh, yeah. So then all I do is 0.956 electron volts times 1.6 times central of 19. So I have one electron volt. So one point six six is what I think joules. Good. So then I have this many electrons. So let's just do this as a, a, a full formal unit conversion, so we don't get confused. So th th this is a good start. So I want mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to make sure I have a unit. So I have electron volts at the bottom. Right. So one electron volt. Yeah, I should just do it this way. Yeah, this is the way to do uh, unit conversions. This is the one right way to do unit conversions. Any other way of doing unit conversions, it's easy to make mistakes. Yeah. Six point six three. Yeah, three. That's a three four. Yeah, what 
did you get as your answer here? Um, 2.3 times 10 to the 14. And the units would be? Hertz. Okay, by the way, so what value did you use for H? Um, 6.63. Right, now, let's look up where that came from here. Where is that in our inside front cover? And what are the units on that? Joules, per joules. So when you look that up, you can see this is in joules times seconds. That's why we had to get out of electron volts and put this into joules before we could actually use this formula, because H was already in joules. Okay, good. And then I just use the C. It's lambda. So and then I do C to my plate. Oh, well, what was the question? What's the wavelength? What energy of the boson? Okay. So what's the answer to the question? Um, would this have been fine? Yeah, actually we were doing a ton of work we didn't need. So I guess we didn't get our habit of always writing down the question with a big question mark. We should always start by writing down the question. All right, well, that was good practice anyway. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so what was the answer? Volts. Yeah, you could put it in joules, but there's no point here. This is actually more interpretable. So this would have been their best answer right here. Uh, but it definitely would be a, a popular question someplace else to ask you for the frequency of the wavelength. But always want to make sure you're writing down what the question is. Okay, um, so the key thing here is what did you plug in for Z? One. How did you know one? Hydrogen. Yeah, but if it weren't hydrogen, we'd plug in a different thing for Z. Oftentimes people get lazy and think that Z is always one. That's they what give you something that has like a really high atomic. I don't even know if this would work for a big atomic number. They'd give you something like hydrogen, helium, or lithium usually, I think. Okay, but it doesn't have to be hydrogen. All right, and then we plugged in the, the five and the three that we wanted. Okay, good. We should actually have drawn a picture of what's happening here. Where's the electron starting? So it's, from, it's from three, and then it goes to five. Yeah, we should actually always build that into our picture. Okay, and then we did extra work for extra credit. Okay. All right, so I think that's a good answer for part A. That's how about part B? Yeah, if you had time, you could prove that mathematically. But we just know so that's the one deficiency with the picture that you drew. I think you were drawing them all equally spaced. But it's good to get into the habit of drawing uh, each level is successfully closer to the next level. So we should build this into our picture as well. see why that is, because remember, if we ever got to zero, we'd be free. So there just is less and less room for the energy levels here. They're getting packed in closer and closer to zero. So I'd actually draw in my picture. This was the first transition they were talking about. Was this part A? And this was part B, the second transition. So the answer to part B was? That's less. Yeah, it would be less than part A. And even though they didn't ask us, which of the photons would have the, um, would the part B have a bigger or longer wavelength than part A? Bigger wavelength in B. And frequency? Um, lower. Yeah, so they like to test that E and F are directly related, and they're inversely related to F, uh, to lambda. This question was too easy. They didn't even get into all this blood chart stuff. So once we know, so we know that these transitions up here have smaller e's, which means the photons involved have smaller f's and bigger lambdas. All right, so that would be a good extension of this type of problem here. Okay, so uh, this is the, a good example of how you would solve uh, this type of thing, the type of picture uh, that you would make here. So now we have a little practice with both of our energy and wavelength flowcharts. We have the energy wavelength flowchart for particles with mass, and then we have a different energy wavelength flowchart, which is smaller and kind of simpler for photons. And this is a good example of when you might have to use uh, that here. Okay, good. Sounds good. Well, um, as usual, I'd recommend trying to redo uh, these questions, or at least hold on to them so you can redo them when the yes. exam comes around, yeah. uh, so you don't want to lose that. And definitely don't lose the flowcharts uh, that we went over. You might want to make uh, cleaner copies of those, because I think those will be helpful for uh, this week, and they might also still be helpful uh, in the next week's homework uh, as well.
These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.